Okay, we're going to talk about how to use um, these two cryostats to generate sections. So the first thing you'll need to do is have your tissue in its cryo mold, or whatever you have. And I'm just going to break this out. What we need to do first is attach whatever our tissue is to one of these chucks that gets hold, held in the machine. So we have a bunch of them here. And what you need to do is use this OCT. You put a nice healthy squirt onto the block. Um, I would have, if I was doing this experiment for real, I would would have kept track of which direction I needed. Place this in the center as straight as you can and then place it onto dry ice, which I have in my cooler here, and sort of position so that everything stays as nice and straight as possible. Um, this will freeze on the dry ice, and that will take maybe between three and five minutes for that OCT to completely um, sort of harden. It will no longer be um, transparent. It will look like um, a solid ice. And then it will take this chuck and we'll bring it into the cryostat itself. So you can see here is a sample that I prepped earlier. And the reason I did it earlier is that once you put your sample into the machine, um, you wanna let it sit there for about 30 minutes. Uh, if you do not do this, your sections will not come out good um, and you'll experience problems cutting. So you always, once this is, if I was running this sample, it's gonna freeze for a couple more minutes bring it over and let it sit for 30 minutes, you're gonna get a lot better results. And um, potentially, if you didn't do that, you may not even be able to get sections at all. So once we're inside the machine, there's a couple of things I wanna orient to. So you can see I have my paint brushes that I put in here. And also during my sample cooling or warming period, actually, um, I also have my blade inside the machine. So this is all things you would do. Pretend I just prepared this sample. Um, before I go to wait um, 30 minutes, I would maybe put my paintbrushes in and then put this blade in. So to loosen, this lever will be down in this position um, and we have to bring this back. And the blade just slides right in from the side. Uh, you want to avoid touching the blade, it's very sharp and also it will dull it. I'll, I'm only going to tap it at the outer edge just to make sure that it's sitting flat and then I, I tighten this lever. And then I can see somebody has loosened this stage knob that's allowing the stage to move back and forth, so I'm tightening this knob off to the right. However, in general, um, this knob, this knob, and this knob you won't have to touch generally. So that's it. If this is where, if we were prepping a sample, we would wait at this point for 30 minutes. However, I've already done that with the sample that's in here. So we take our sample, which is warmed up to the temperature of the machine, and we come inside. We're going to insert this into the chuck holder. So make this thumb screw, as long as it's turned to the left, this should slide right in. So I have to unscrew it a little bit more. You can see it now is up against the chuck holder, and then I loosely just tighten this thumb screw. You don't need to crank it, um, it just needs to sort of be finger tightened lightly. At this point, there's another thing you can do, which is you can undo this lever, and at that point, this thumb screw now acts as a joystick that allows you to adjust the angle of the sample. And then of course, if you loosen this thumb screw, you can also rotate the sample in this axis. And you just wanna get it as straight as possible for whatever you're doing. You can see if I went to cut right now, which we'll talk about how to do that, I would bump, I'm already, um, my sample is already up past the blade. So I actually have to go up onto this control panel and this button that goes sort of away from us, we're just gonna hold. Actually, if we hold it for long enough, it'll stay the light will stay illuminated and you can see the sample is moving away from the blade. And now we're far enough away that we can sort of get situated here. Let's talk about the locking mechanism. Um, in terms of things that should be kept in mind using these machines, um, 
the machine must be locked when you are putting your hands in and adjusting the blade or trying to catch a, sand, uh, catch a slice or trying to sort of manipulate any part of the machine. The blades are really sharp and there's the potential to get um, a pretty nasty cut. So you always want to make sure the blade is locked so that if you put your hand in, the sample can't move, that entire sample holder won't move on you and push your hand into the blade. So on this one, this knob goes back, this little knob right here goes back when it's locked. So you can see the wheel won't move. And I just bring this forward to allow um, the wheel to move. And when I want it to lock, I kind of, you have to move it up almost into this one o'clock position, two o'clock maybe, and put that knob back to make it lock. Um, sometimes people will almost get it like half locked. They'll come up here, like, oh look, the knob went back. Here especially. And you can see the wheel isn't actually locked here. So that's very dangerous. Make sure it's always all the way back when you lock it. And I like to give it a little test, personally, to make sure. OK, now we're going to start to look at sectioning. So you could come into the machine. And we kind of want to get our sample relatively close to the blade. Um, otherwise, you're going to be just be moving the wheel a long time, trying to advance the stage to the right point. So we can use this arrow, the one that's going towards us. What I like to do is I just like to bring it until visually it starts to get close to the blade. All right, so it's getting very close here. Now we sort of can start working. So um, I'm again going to check to make sure everything is nice and straight. At this point, I'm also going to take a Kim wipe and a little bit of ethanol and make sure that the stage is really clean. So this is another part where you have to be very careful because you're putting your hand near the blade. When you wipe the stage off with ethanol, um, make sure that you don't run your finger across the blades. It sounds simple, but um, I've almost done it multiple times before and many people who use these machines cut themselves this way. You also want to look at this glass plate and you want this to be very clean. So eventually this is going to be what's trapping your sections and helping them lie flat. And if it is not clean, either this or the stage, um, your samples will tear. So I'm drying this off now. And again, carefully drying the stage. This is where um, I've almost cut myself. If you're in a rush and you're just trying to get this thing dried off, you can put yourself in a bad position. Okay, all dry. Now, it's gonna be hard to see on the video, but this plate is actually not perfectly symmetrical. So the edge that is up right now, again, I don't know if you can see, there's a small lip on both sides. That lip, when we go into the machine, is going to stay up so that the side with the lip is facing this way. It's not facing down towards the plastic. I put the lip up so that when this closes, the side that has the lip is down towards the stage. You can picture it's like there's a little, just a little carve out that your um, sections can fit into. If you do it the other way, they won't sit as flat. Okay. At this point, we can start sectioning. So we want to start by just getting to our tissue. There's a lot of OCT and stuff in the way. So we want to start with thicker sections. So what we do is we go to this button right here um, that has the double arrow, and we hold this button. And you can see that we just switched our light from section thickness to now there's a light on by trim thickness. So trimming is what we're going to do to take th thicker sections. We can hit the arrows. I'm going to go to like 100 or 150 just to carve off the excess OCT and get to our actual sample. So here, again, we're not quite to our sample yet. I can advance the sample. You can see I'm trying to cut. And it might take a second to sort of catch onto the sample. But every time you turn the wheel, the sample is going to be advanced slightly towards the blade. So, and then this is where you can start to make adjustments. So this is going to be hard to see. If I get my paintbrush, you can see I have, I'm starting to get cutting over here, but not here. So that tells me that my sample is actually angled slightly. 
So I'm not going to belabor this too much because this is going to depend a lot on how your sample is mounted. But I'm, you can just, again, loosen this lever and use the thumb screw as a joystick to just slightly change the angle of our sample. So that now, hopefully, when we cut, at first that's going to be how it was. Now, we're getting a nice, pretty even band of slice coming across. We're not going to be cutting at an angle through our entire block. So at this point, I basically, I would maybe sweat it a little bit more if I was taking real sections, but that's straight enough for me. And we're just going to advance through. You can see I'm going pretty fast and I'm not facing much resistance. I just switched up to 250 micron thickness sections just to shave off this block. And you can start to see some darkness um, appear where we're actually starting to get into the sample itself. Now you can start to see the brain tissue poking out. Um, again, I'm locking the wheel before I sort of clean this up. I don't want um, my hand to get bumped into the blade if this thing moves. Um, I, you can also, there is a light here if you prefer. Um, I, I find the glare to be annoying, but some people prefer to have the light. Um, and I'm just gonna do that so you can see this more clearly on the camera. We're going to switch to taking actual sections now. So we go back to this double arrow. And if we just tap this button, if you watch this light, it switches up to the section thickness. So now we're able to take between one and 20 micron sections as opposed to 10 and 500. So these are the more coarse, this is the more fine sectioning. So you could, for example, set this to like 20, and we go back. Note, the first section you take is gonna be at whatever thickness was set last, so this is gonna be another 250 micron section. But after this point, you can see that these sections are gonna start coming off thinner. So I can put this glass plate down, and I wanna apply I'm gonna turn this off, I think the glare might get you off the light. Slow, even pressure will push the slice under the glass plate, and then we can lock this, open our glass plate, and I lost my section. You can use your paintbrush, and this section now we can either put onto a slide, or if you get this paintbrush wet, you can pick it up and put it into a multi-well plate, like a 24-well plate. If you were going to put it on a slide, you would want to do everything you can to minimize the curling of this section, like opening it up with a paintbrush. The thinner the section, the harder it will be to keep it from rolling on itself. You can kind of open it up, and there's sort of a finesse to it, but you can make an attempt to make it open and you literally just press the top of your slide. And you can see that these sections like to get to anything that are hotter than them. So that this paintbrush had warmed from the air a little bit and the slice just sticks right to it. So the same thing will happen to the glass of your slide. Um, it will just stick right on there. So let's just take a few more sections. So again, when I'm doing this, you can just watch my hand. It's really important that we don't use a jerking motion to get the sample into the block. You don't want to smash the block into the blade. I just slowly approach and provide really even, consistent pressure until my section is taken. And you can see what I got on the stage is nice and flat. If I go really fast, you may get lucky, but depending on how pesky your sample is or how delicate it is, you may tear your section apart or cause other issues. Okay, at this point, I'd just like to reemphasize you want to keep this glass plate really clean. So if it gets, if anything gets wet, like if you have buffer on your paintbrush and it starts to freeze or you get gunk on this glass or on the blade or the stage, you may run into issues where your sections start to not be good quality. And you'll want to, again, take ethanol and clean off the stage, clean off the glass plate, make sure the glass plate goes back in the correct orientation again with those, the small lip, the small um, part that's sort of raised above the rest, so that when you close the glass plate, those raised edges should be going down towards the stage. This will all help you get better sections. I'll also note, if you're looking to take thicker sections, thicker than um, like 10 microns or 20 microns, you can actually use this, these trimming thicknesses 
to take real sections. So when I take brain sections, I usually take them at 40 or 50 microns. So I actually never use this section thickness. I, again, you can hold this to make it go back to trim. And I would just lower this from like, if I was trimming at 200, I can lower this down to 50. Again, whatever slice you take will always be at the last setting. So this will be at, this will be at, um, that was a thicker section. But then now that it is sort of set properly, the next section will be at 50. Sometimes the first one you get will be a little messy. That's okay. Just clean that off. As you sort of get into that new thickness, you'll find maybe after the first section that you're able to start getting good ones at the new thickness, okay? So again, you can use trimming, this trimming setting to either shave your block or to take thicker sections like I do for a lot of immunohistochemistry or especially for um, cells, a lot of people in tumors, a lot of people will take thinner sections. So if you tap this double arrow button, we'll move to the section thickness. We want to go back to trim, we have to hold this button. So hold to go down to trim, just tap it to go back to section thickness. Um, besides that, there isn't much on the machine you'll have to adjust. There's a few other buttons on here that are um, super important for your training. When we're done, again, we want to make sure the wheel is locked. I'll just show you where we have to clean. So we'll want to carefully take, open, take this lever back. This lever will free the blade. There's a small piece of metal right here that you can sort of push and you can see it comes out. And just that allows you to sort of, if you push it up, it just frees the blade up a little bit so that we can carefully come in and grab it. Um, otherwise, you're just trying to grab the thin edge of the blade. And this can go in the sharps container that's up here. Um, you can scoot this piece of metal back in, close the lever. And then there's a couple things we have to clean out. So obviously we take out our sample. Um, if you just let this warm up a little bit, you can scrape the rest of this off with a putty knife, which we have over here. And this can be frozen for storage. This tray comes out. So I'll clean this up in a second, but this should all go into biohazard, which we have one off to the side here. And then also, this is one people forget about. This entire section comes out, and then there's actually a little tray that we can access here that catches some other shards. You also need to empty that and put that into biohazard. You will make sure there's no excess sections around the edges, clean off the stage really nicely. Um, you can clean off the glass plate. And when you're done, we also have this little vacuum cleaner here if you want to sort of if the ethanol and the Kim wipe aren't helping you get the last few bits of your sections, you can take that little mini vacuum and vacuum out the rest of your fragments. Close the sash when you're done. Do not leave it open. Make sure to turn the light off um, to prevent extra condensation and heat inside the machine. I'll just reference a couple important controls on this cryostat. The most important thing is the wheel lock. So if you come over here, you can see um, this one doesn't have a physical lock, just it will, it's sort of hard to move the knob when it's locked, it has a lot of resistance. But when you press this lever and you press the, the right side of it, now this lever moves very freely. So that's essentially your lock. If we hit this left option, you can see that now this we're hitting resistance again. It's possible to move it, but not easy. In here, again, we have a similar glass plate set up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this stage and this glass plate are very clean. This orange lever will allow you to do a similar thing in terms of inserting your blade. And then a lot of these other knobs are stage adjustment knobs that you won't need. Um, this one on the left and this one on the right. Um, the orange knob and this gray knob are what you're gonna need mostly. And then the only other thing I'll mention is we have a similar design. This thumb screw, you can loosen it to put your sample in. You have a lever here that loosens that allows us to sort of move this like a joystick to set the angle, tighten everything loosely. And if anything doesn't move easily on these machines, contact us. There's a QR code to fill out a maintenance form um, and make sure that um, you're not forcing or breaking anything. There should not be much resistance from any levers on this machine. 
for example, if this isn't moving, you're like, wow, this has a lot of resistance. It's because you have it locked still. You have to unlock it. Um, and there's a lot of things like that that can break if you just power through. Um, when you're done with this machine, we want to turn the light off. So when I started sectioning, the light turned on automatically. But we want to turn it off. So we go to menu, and then you can actually scroll up to go because it's right at the bottom of the list. Um, we go to illumination, hit this down arrow, go down to turn this off. You can see the light turned off. We have menu to exit. Um, and then the only other thing to mention is when you're sectioning the controls, you have um, this button where it sort of has the thick wedge and the thin wedge allows you to switch between fine and trim mode. And then these arrows allow you to change the thickness that's here. Inside the machine, similar setup, we have these two arrows that allow us to bring the stage or the chuck holder towards the stage or away from the stage. Remember to close the sash when you're done. That about covers it. Um, please let us know if you have any questions using this machine. Again, if anything seems wrong or like it's taking extra resistance or it looks, feels like it's not just working easily, um, let us know. When you cut through your sample, it should feel like you're cutting through a starburst candy. Um, any more resistance than that, something is wrong. So just keep that in mind.